So the big particular clinical problem that we're addressing is serious nerve injuries, injuries to the peripheral nervous system. So those are the nerves that actually we find in our arms and our legs. And about one in a thousand of the population receives very serious traumatic injuries through do-it-yourself type accidents, through to road traffic accidents. But the problem is that the nerve is cut through by that type of accident and repairing that is a big problem. Surgically, those nerves can be stitched together if you have a clean knife cut, but in many instances you lose a gap. You might lose a centimetre or two centimetres of nerve. The peripheral nervous system is quite unique and it differs from the central nervous system, the spinal cord, because it can repair, it can regrow. But existing therapies for addressing that consist of very simple tubes and tubulation devices as we see on the screen here where one end of the nerve is slotted into the tube and the other end is slotted into this end of the tube and the nerve can grow down that. But the problem with this is that the nerves only grow a few millimetres and then they stop. And we're addressing injuries that are several centimetres. And so we're making better tubes and that's the whole purpose of making better scaffolds for supporting nerve growth. And so the nerve has thousands and thousands of individual fibres called axons that we need to direct down that tube. Okay, so this is our confocal microscope imaging facility and we have two confocal microscopes here. These are, these are powered by these um, computers here and a set of lasers. And what we're doing here is imaging tissue constructs and cell and biomaterial constructs in three dimensions. That's, that's principally what this bit of kit is able to do. So we put the sample on the microscope here and the sample here contains a synthetic fibre scaffold and seeded into that synthetic fibre scaffold are nerve cells and we let them grow for a few days and then what we need to do is be able to image them and image them in three dimensions. And so we take a series of individual pictures that frame by frame image through, we call it a Z series, that image actually through from the top to the bottom of that sample. Now that can take quite some time, it may take half an hour to be able to image through, but what we do is that we build up a picture that enables us to then view that entire sample and the images that we have on the screen here are actually passing through into and out of that individual sample. Now what we have here are aligned fibres and they're made from a synthetic polymer called polycaprolactone and we've made thousands and thousands of these as a scaffold and the size of those fibres is absolutely critical because the size of those fibres is the same size as the individual nerve cells that we are trying to regenerate. We've then put the nerve cells onto those fibre scaffolds and they have grown along that and so the big question is do those cells actually grow on the fibres? Or to put the question the other way around, does that scaffold actually support the growth of those nerve cells? And so we can simulate that in a simple experiment by putting the two together, the nerve cells and the fibres together, growing them, and then imaging in using this microscope. The basic question that we're asking is very important, which is do the scaffolds support the growth of those aligned nerve fibres? And what we see on the screen here is hundreds and hundreds of individual aligned nerve fibres that have grown along the scaffold and that tells us that these particular scaffolds do indeed support the growth of complex nerve cells. So that's really stage one. That tells us that we've got this scaffold, we've got this support structure that directs hundreds if not thousands of individual nerve cells in the right direction. The next stage is to make a device, a tube, that contains that scaffold inside so that a surgeon can implant it between those two set of nerve ends to enable us to do that. And so what we're doing here is using the same materials but a different fabrication technique called stereolithography and enables us to build up a three-dimensional device, not only as a tube, but a tube that contains those support structures within it. And so the image that we've got here shows precisely these type of structures and what we're aiming towards is having the intricacy of these structures within a single medical device. And the ultimate goal for us is to be able to provide a device that can be an off-the-shelf product for a surgeon that they can take of a particular size and implant it into such a patient with a nerve injury. So we're in a microstereolithography laboratory and the reason that we're here is that the techniques that we're using, the lithography apparatus, enables us to make these nerve guide devices. And so this technique is very attractive because it uses ultraviolet laser light and you shine that light onto your synthetic polymer, this polycaprolactone, and it can convert a liquid to a solid, but it's a 3D fabrication technique, so we can actually make our tubes 
But in addition to not just making the tubes, we can also make these intricate structures inside the tubes. And some of the little devices that we've made very recently are of a clinically appropriate size. And so the diameter of these tubes is about one millimetre and the length of the tubes about six millimetres. And these would address small nerve gap injury models. Now, one of the PhD students in the group Andrew Gill is involved in actually making the lithography devices and he'll explain how the apparatus actually works. So the, the technique that we use to produce the, uh, the structure is very simple. It's a projection microsteroidography system. Um, simply we uh, put a bitmap into the control computer. Uh, for example, this honeycomb structure here. You can see it's got the outer circle and then an the internal structure. So we put this into the control system. Um, we then project that using the laser into the polymer. Uh, so you see the image on the screen is formed on the sample here. Then by adding more polymer and moving the, the sample stage down, uh, we can write out a, a tube in the vertical direction. Uh, it's very simple and very sort of user friendly. You simply add a bitmap, project it and you know, run a program and it will write your tube for you.